This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. When I first moved back to London years ago, I moved in and shared a flat with a fellow photographer and we became good friends really quickly. We'd come home from work usually in the evening and we'd sit around the kitchen table and just talk about whatever's going on in our lives. But because of our shared interests, at some point, the subject would always switch back to photography. I remember one particular evening where we both come home and we've been sitting there talking in the kitchen for what seemed like hours, talking about the shoots that we wanted to do and the techniques we wanted to try and just the state of the photography industry in general. But at some point I got fairly impassioned and opinionated about something and I forget what it was now, but I do remember as I was climbing the stairs to go up to my bedroom, I had this nagging question in my head. Do I complain too much? You see, my friend Radek was and is such a kind, generous and gentle soul. I'm going to leave a link to his Instagram down in the description so you can go see his beautiful photography as well. But as I replayed that conversation we just had, I started to realize how much of my side of that conversation had been so negative. I complained about other photographers, about social media and about the terrible autofocus on my camera. If I'm honest, it was a long list of negative stuff. But as I replayed his side of the conversation, I realized how positive it was in response to the things that I was saying. He just seemed so excited. He was saying how this year was going to be the year, how he was really enjoying learning and how much he enjoyed the shoot from the last weekend. And he'd already told me that he'd had some real difficulties in that shoot. So he had things to complain about if he wanted to. His attitude had been positive and grateful and mine on the other end had been negative and full of moaning. And to be honest, I felt quite ugly about it. Isn't it funny how some people can shame you without saying a word, just by being their gracious selves? And it's in that unspoken comparison between you and somebody else that you're convicted about who you really are in the world. And here's the truth. He was growing much faster than me as a photographer, and I knew it. And that night, I had to ask myself the question, was it his attitude that was propelling him forward? And was it mine that was holding me back? But before we talk about complaining in particular and what I think it means as creatives if we get stuck in that mode, let's quickly talk about ego. And I have to say up front, and I've said it before on this channel, there is nothing wrong with an ego. We all have to have one. It's where we get our sense of self and even I think where some of our style and our worldview comes from. But if we're not self-aware enough, our ego can take us off track. One of my favorite authors, Richard Rohr, says that the greatest trick an uncalibrated or insecure ego can play is to try and convince us internally that we are somehow separate and superior from everything else that's going on around us. When we're unsure of ourselves, we'll often start to play mental games where we try and shoot everything else down or disqualify it to convince ourselves that the reason we're not progressing as we feel we should is secretly because we're better and it's just that people suck and, and the industry is in a terrible state and the world in general is just broken. Looking out there and pointing the finger at everything in the world that we don't think is the way that it should be is often a whole lot more comfortable than looking inside and working is what it is about us that needs to change in order for us to move forward. And let's be honest, that trick is usually designed to stall that overdue uncomfortable introspection. So let's come back and talk about complaining specifically and hopefully we can start by being honest with each other and admitting that photographers in general can be quite a moany bunch sometimes. We all seem to have very strongly held opinions and we love to yell about them on forums and in comment sections. We moan about cameras and their little shortcomings. We complain about things like ergonomics or color science or the fact that the autofocus is a fraction of a second too slow. 
But let's be honest, the cameras that we have in our hands today are far greater pieces of kit than the great photographers had when they made their images. And the fact that our images don't stack up with theirs is to do with our lack of talent and not the camera in our hands. It's just often easier to blame the box, isn't it? We complain a lot about social media and the algorithms and how nobody seems to see our work online. But let's be honest, we don't pay for these services. They're built by companies and those apps will always work so that it serves them as the company. They don't really care about us as individuals and complaining about that situation isn't going to change it. We moan about other photographers, the techniques they choose to use, the marketing tactics they employ, the post-processing they put on their images or just the way they conduct themselves in general. And I think too many of us assume that our way of doing things is always the best and some even relish the opportunity to get up there and start criticizing. We complain about the state of the photography industry, how ubiquitous it is to see images out there these days and how disposable everything feels, or how technology is changing and AI is coming in and how the whole landscape for photographers is shifting and we're all having to adapt. All this complaining that we do might seem harmless and it might even feel good to do in the moment because we get so impassioned about it, it, it sort of gives us a bit of a fizz, doesn't it? But psychologists have proven that if we make that way of thinking a habit, it literally begins to rewire our brains so that we start looking for the negative in everything and we suck it up and soak it in. And that way of thinking, I promise you, will kill motivation and creativity in the long run. Spending time online, I often wonder to myself how much great work isn't being made because so many photographers have turned themselves into angsty critics instead of artists who make beautiful things. So where do you want to put your energies and what do you want your attitude to be? I have a feeling that those of us who spend so much time and energy on complaining are actually those who don't have a lot of faith in our own abilities. And so it's easier just to go out there and play that ego game of pretending that we're somehow separate and superior to everything else going on around us with the complaints that we make. The bottom line is that if we're serious about becoming better photographers, we have to ask ourselves, are we complaining more than we're making? Because if we are, it's going to hold us back. To succeed, we have to put the ego games aside and put every ounce of energy we have into making new things. We have to get in the arena. Let me read you this famous quote by Theodore Roosevelt on the difference between critics and doers. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I've learned that those times in my life where I move to the sidelines, up into the stands and start complaining, instead of getting down in the arena to actually get involved and make things myself, it's usually because I'm afraid. Because let's be honest, it takes courage to make new things and it takes vulnerability to share those things with the world. But when my courage fails, that's when I start moving to the sidelines to complain. It's a cheap trick. But if we want to get better, maybe it's time to call ourselves on that habit of complaining to soothe our struggling egos. It might be worth taking a look at how we think and the things that we choose to speak about, because we might find that we spend a shocking amount of time focusing on the negative. I often get asked on podcast interviews, what's the one piece of advice you give new photographers to help them get better at their photography? And my answer is always painfully simple. It's just to make a lot of images. I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of images and getting into the discipline of going out there to make as much work as you possibly can I think is the only way to get better. There's no substitute. And to do that we have to stop wasting our energies on things like bemoaning the state of the photography industry or moaning about that photographer and the way that they do stuff or complaining about the little niggles with the camera that we actually have in our hand. We have to replace complaining with gratitude for the things that we actually have and get out there and get back to making because it's the only way we get better. Then we can rediscover the joys of learning and being a lifelong student of this art form that we all say that we love. 
we can get back out there and we can make a ton of images because we will learn so much faster every time we click the shutter, learning how to communicate ourselves through our work. Because ultimately, those of us who are serious about this art form will always be those of us who make way more than we complain. Just a quick announcement to say that the latest edition of my magazine, Parable, is out now. This is volume three called Keeping Faith. It features a collection of images showing the light and shadow play inside a lot of the old churches and cathedrals that I've visited over the years. But more than that, the written portion of this magazine is quite a rich and personal story. And it answers a question that a lot of you ask me, which is, what was it like to work for the church? How did you end up there? And what's your faith look like today? Are you still somebody who believes in God? Where do you sit with that whole thing? So I've really tried to be vulnerable and honest in this story and hopefully a lot of you will find it interesting as well. I will leave a link down below where you can purchase that magazine either in physical form or there's a digital version with a PDF and an MP3 of me reading it to you. That's available over on my website. I'll leave a link down below. And then thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself for over a decade now as my website of choice. Personally, I always wanted a website where the thing that you were struck by when you visited my domain was just to see my work shown front and center. I wanted very little text and very little clutter. And thankfully, Squarespace have a whole host of templates put together by professional designers that have that very clean and minimal look. So it's your work that does the talking. Putting a website together takes no time at all. In the back end, it's just a case of clicking and dragging in text blocks, photo blocks and galleries and videos and contact forms and whatever you need. You could probably put a website together in no more than an hour and it would look great. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you.